All right, praise God. Jesus bless this message. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, guys, we got the spiritual gift inventory. I just, it's uploading now. Make sure you take that. We got more in the barn this weekend. Um, but I have talked to, you know how many of you listen to me right now that have said these words to me. I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm forgiven. I don't feel like I'm saved. I don't feel God's presence. I don't feel. I've got a, I got a lot, a long lesson laid out for you here. It's important. It's critical that you listen, y'all. And it's critical that you hit the share button and put this out there on your Instagram, your TikTok, your Facebook, your emails, your whoever, your text messages. How many people, honestly, God, feel this way? And on the inside, they may look good to you on the outside, like they just happy with the Lord. Inside, be suffering, thinking this junk. I talked to y'all. So you need to pass this around. Okay, so I'm going to call a lot of scriptures out more than this. But as I do, I want you to pause the video. When I say pause, pause and read it. Okay, because I don't have the time nor storage to read all these scriptures out to you. And I, I'm not going to read them all to you. I'm really trying to encourage you. To get in there and, and study and read and seek yourself. I'm laying it out for you, y'all. But you really need to get in there and do some looking at it yourself. Okay, so Father God, again, we plead the blood of Jesus on this study. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right. I'm going to go to Second Samuel. Go ahead and turn your Bibles to 2 Samuel. Give me just a minute. Bible falling to pieces. I'm already at 2 Samuel. Uh, chapter 22, verse 31. For those of you that feel like I don't feel this and that and everything else, if you pay attention, hopefully this will help you. Okay? I want to know if you ever walked into a room. Think about it this way. You ever walked into an empty room like in the middle of the night? You're like you're half awake. Out of the corner of your eyes, man, you see something by the door. It's cold, chill, goes up and down your back, your hair stand up on your on your legs and everything, your arms. <laughs> and you feel like somebody's watching you, right? You ever had that? You fall over the couch, like trying to get to that light switch, man. And eventually you turn on the light. It's a bag, man, that you left there last night. You ever done that? <laughs> I've done it a few times. It was nothing, right? It was nothing. My point is it was nothing, but it felt real, right? Those were real goosebumps that you had on your arm, real hair standing up on your arm, right? That was real electrical feeling crawling through your hair. And that felt real. We feel all kinds of stuff in a normal day, okay? We feel happy. We feel sad. We feel loved. We feel alone. But I want us to think about some feelings that we have today. And I, I, I really, really think this is a very important topic we need to look at. I wanted to talk about this for a long time on here, but I've been put, pulling it together. It takes some time to get it all together. I want to get it right. Okay? Because I think it's going to set some of you free. If you listen, that big IF word God shows me all the time, if it's your choice, in other words. So let's get to some, let's, let's get to some feelings all of us have probably had from time to time. All right. And we're going to get to some scripture in just a minute, but right now let's talk about feelings. Okay. There's three big ones, big ones that I want us to think about right there. Look at where my pointer stick. We're rearranging this room down here to try to get it prepared for Igor. So I can't uh, right there. Look at my shadow. I, God's presence right there. I don't feel God's presence. How many of you have said that? Sometimes we have that euphoric sense of God's presence, right? And that usually happens, usually, uh, when we are together with the body in worship and fellowship. And that's the purpose. That's why he said do that, to encourage each other. Uh, but usually you get that. Sometimes you get that real euphoric feeling, right? Well... We'll feel like we can just look up, man, and he'll be standing right there, just standing right there. Those are the moments <clears throat> that we try to hold on to. You can feel them alone, too. Yeah, you can. But but you want, why don't this happen all the time? Every time I pray, every time I talk to God, 
<clears throat> well, hold on to it. And we try to hold on to those moments. So we start this thinking process in our minds, right? I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to keep doing exactly the same thing tomorrow I did today. I don't want to lose this feeling. Whatever I'm doing right now, that's going to be my process and my routine every day. That way, God will always be near me. And so we camp out right there where we think God is. You with me? We tell people, y'all, that we're tight with God now. We're comfortable in that place. And we don't think it can get any better. I have people tell me that. I know God brought you here and so do you. Because you know, when you hear teaching coming out of my mouth, you know it's God. Because <clears throat> you can't you can't mis misconstrue God. Either you know him or you don't. <clears throat> And those of you that know the Lord, you know, it's God teaching through my body. You know that. You don't think it'd get no better. I'm fine right here where I'm at. I, I, don't, I don't need to come to the barn and I don't really need to. Well, you get that choice, man. And then you stand in God, you stand in front of God for that choice. I have people right now that knows God brought them here from my testimony. They heard it there. That's what God gave me a testimony for. And then he brings them to hear him teach. They're here, then they're gone. Some of you I've been emailing lately. Hey, where'd you go? You just vanished. Where'd you go? Some of them won't even respond. But I'm going to do my job. God gave me. You can tend to walk away from God. And these people don't think they're walking away from God. But when you walk out of his will into your will, which you think is right, you've walked away from God. So these people think, you know, well, I felt God right here in, in my bedroom. So this is my happy place. So I'm going to do, I ain't going to change this. I'm going to keep doing this. But then something happens. What happens? Maybe we lose our temper. Or maybe we get a, a temptation and we let it get the best of us. Maybe, you know, Nothing that overt happens, really. Maybe nothing that, that, that strange happens. Maybe it just happens over time. Maybe it's not instantly. Maybe it happens over time. Something will happen. Somewhere along the way, we become aware that something's missing. Right? Oh, yeah, because they all come back. And I know. I'm deep. God shows me this, y'all. We lose that place. We lose that comfort. We lose that feeling that we had. So we start going over what's missing. We evaluate what we've let go of, what we could be this, could be that. We try to get that routine back. Maybe if I do it this way again, and I'll feel it again, you know. If we could just go back, man, to where, if I could just go back to where I was. But it don't seem to help, does it? No. It's like you say, it's like God's not there at all, man. It's like he's not even there. Has, and I hear this one a lot. Has God given up on me? Have I gone too far? I hear These are words I hear from you guys constantly. I write them down. You think God's given up on me? You think I've gone too far? Am I done? Am I through? Well, that's one feeling you might have. Yeah, if I'm here stepping on toes... Put toes in the comments section below. I don't feel God's presence. What's another one I hear all the time that people really, really honestly, God, feel this. And you're probably listening to me right now. The second one down, forgiven. Forgiven. I don't feel forgiven. I don't feel forgiven. <laughs> so we messed up, right? We all mess up. We've all messed up. And it might have taken you a while to realize that we messed up, right? Or maybe we're, we're immediately convicted of our sin. God does a lot of conviction out of my mouth. That's love word. It hurts us, right? To know that we have hurt God. And I got to experience some of that pain, y'all. That's why you hear that coming out of my mouth every time I teach. 
Want to know why I sound the way I do and why other people don't sound this way? Because other people didn't experience what I experienced. Other people didn't feel physically the pain with Jesus that we cause him, but I did. So we tell God, man, we admit we messed up. We admit we've sinned. We bow our heads. We tell God we're sorry. We do it by the book. Confess and repent, right? And we wait for the relief and the lack of guilt. We wait for the guilt to leave us, right? We wait for God to step in. We wait for God to straighten the situation out. And we wait and we wait and we wait. Nothing happens. In other words, the consequences of our mess is still going on. We still hurt. And others are still hurting. Right? We have no feeling of forgiveness. Everything is still all jacked up. All messed up. And you're like, why do I feel like this? Did this act, did, I, did what I do go so far and beyond? Is this such a bad sin that God won't forgive me? Did I step over the line? Am I past forgiveness? Is it all over for me now? Am I done? That's another feeling we have. I don't feel forgiven. How about the next feeling that I hear all the time? Saved right there. Saved. I, I don't feel saved. I don't feel saved. Let's talk about what saved means for just a minute, y'all. Saved is a Bible word. Write that down. Write that down. But saved is a Bible word. Let me find my shoe. Hold on. I want you to write it down just like this. So you can get it, get it in your eyes. But saved. Is a Bible word. Copy that down. Saved is a description of certain people. I'm not going to get back and forth. You can write that down. Saved is a description of certain people. People who trust in Jesus Christ, right? We are sinners who need to be saved from the state that we're in. Amen. We are sinners who need to be saved from our future without God. Amen. When we trust in Jesus, we are saved. He died on the cross to pay for our sin. I didn't say when we know Jesus, when we know about him, we're saved. Or if we agree with what he says, we're saved. I said, when you trust in Jesus, in Jesus, that's a whole nother ball game. That's a relationship package. When you trust in him, you're saved. Okay. When you repent and you trust in him, he died on the cross y'all to pay for your sins. So when we trust in him, we actually believe that he paid for our sins and we don't want to keep putting those sins on him anymore. And we don't to the best of the, our choice ability. We're saved from paying for our own sins ourselves. When Jesus rose from the dead, he conquered death, right? He tells us whoever trusts in him will get the life that he has. So when we trust in Jesus, we're saved from hell, right? And we receive life, okay? We come to the realization that Jesus is who he says he is. That, he's, that, that he has done what he said he would do. We believe and trust in him alone for forgiveness and for eternal life. And when we do that, we're saved. Now, after that comes the works. Start abiding in that salvation. And I said again, that's when you get to know his word and start doing the things he tells you to do because you are saved, because you love him. You're letting him live the rest of his life through your body. That's works. But we're going to talk about salvation here. 
the minute that you decide I'm all in, I'm all in. You've repented. You've confessed. You've repented to Jesus. You're all in. Now be all in, be all in, be all in. For some people, it's an instant decision. For other people, it's a gradual decision. But but all of us, at some point, y'all, come to understand that we're saved, okay? We have this sense that things are different in our life and the way we feel, the way we think. We see we're different, right? Do you feel different? Are you changed? Because when we're saved, we're changed. And it's a glorious feeling, actually. All the weight, man, is lifted off our shoulders. Like we had confession, I told you, Sunday night in the barn. Things that people were scared to death won't go tell nobody in that room where they did. All that weight, man, lifted off their shoulders. Freedom. The Bible starts making sense when you live in Jesus, y'all. Starts making sense. We feel the love of Jesus when you live in him, when you choose to step out and do it yourself. When you abide in him, you feel that love, okay? You start seeing people in a different way and it's all good, okay? But time moves on, and maybe that glow gets a little bit dull. We lose those initial feelings. It's not as strong as it was before. Am I doing something wrong? Did I really get saved? Did I ever really get saved? Because I'm sliding back to the way I used to be. Maybe the doubt starts to set in, okay? Uh, you'll be like, wow, man, did I pray the right prayer? Did I do the right thing? Am I at the right place? Why do I feel like this? Am I really saved? Is that you, y'all? Fess up in the comment section if that's you. These are all some very, 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 I'm talking about very serious issues, okay? Questioning these things can cause a lot of heartache to you. Sitting around wondering all the time, am I saved? Did I do this right? Did I do that right? It causes a lot of heartache. It can make you sick. Drive you kind of cuckoo, kind of batty, right? There's a common thread running through these three questions. I don't feel God's presence. I don't feel forgiven. I don't feel saved. Do you see what that common thread here is? If you do, put it in the comment section. The common thread... Is this word right here? Uh, let's use this marker. The common thread is the word feel. Feel. That's your common thread between those three questions. All these questions we've mentioned are based on our feelings. You with me? Am I saved? Did I lose it? Did I do the right thing? It's all based on your feelings. Listen to me now. If you're going to live your life solely on how you feel, what's well, hard to do? Very hard to do, man. Because we feel fantastic sometimes, man. We feel great. And other times we feel really, really bad. Don't we? Yes, we do. So your feelings, man, they're not always based on reality. That's what I'm trying to tell you. What you feel isn't always based on what's real. Do you understand? You might eat a snow cone in the desert. Maybe we get brain freeze and we start to shake and shiver, right? Might have a cold feeling, okay? Our feeling doesn't change the reality that we're in a burning, stifling, hot desert. Do you get me now? There's some reason that could cause your feelings, y'all. There's some things that could cause it. Our feelings may be caused by our mood. You know, our feelings might be caused uh, maybe by our, caused by our attitude. Maybe you got a bad attitude. Could be caused by what's around you, what you're surrounded by, which is another reason Jesus told you people, forsake not assembling thyselves together, which is why I keep inviting you to come to the barn Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday, which is why we have it, which is why Jesus Christ brought every one of your ears listening to me here. He wants you in the barn. 
That's why Jesus brought you here. You're like, nah, I found your video. I don't care how you found it. I know Jesus and I know why he brought you here. No matter how he did it, he wants you in the barn. <clears throat> so your surroundings are extremely critically important, but you may feel the way you feel because of what you're around. For some of you, it's around nothing but sin. So of course you're going to feel sin. Our feelings, y'all, it's not a good anchor to place your hope in your feelings, okay? They're not reliable source for truth, what you feel. Feelings change, okay? They're up and down. Truth based on changing feelings is a truth constantly in chaos. Okay? So, we got to have some solid source of reality outside of our feelings. All right? So, you say, what, what's a solid source of truth when we don't even feel God's presence? What is a solid source of truth? What's a solid source of truth when we don't feel forgiven? Man, what's a solid source of truth, Kim, when I don't even feel like I'm saved? Uh, well, let me tell you what that solid source of truth is and find a marker. Hold on. There's a solid source of truth. Oh, that's not going to work. A solid source of truth put truth. Is God. Silent source of truth for you is God. And I want you to write that down. Let's read 2 Samuel 22:31. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all of them. Who trust in him. In him. So what's that telling you there? That God is the only. Reliable. Source. Of truth. And he's given us his word. The Bible. He gave us this to know. His truth. How many of you are actually in it. Every day. And set time in the day to be in it. And you do and you want it. You look forward to it. And how many of you listen to me don't? Oh, I want to, but you got to have, if you're, you, you're on that side of the fence or you're on the side of the fence that says, no, I make time and I do it, baby, every day. And I love it. But you're on one side or the other. He's telling you his truth is solid and it's dependable 100%, okay? Whether we feel good, bad, indifferent, whatever, God's truth is 100% reliable, so, here's where you're going to start pausing your video. We're going to go to his truth to counter our feelings. You're going to go in, when you, when you feel depressed, get, I tell you this, I say this all, all the time. Set your mind on the things above. And I will tell you, many people will give their wisdom on that. Yeah, if, if singing songs works for me, or uh, just praying on my knees, worship, you know, that, that helps me. Praying in tongues helps me. And here I am, Kim, telling you, get in and dissect the word. Dissect the word. Dissect the word. Because sometimes you're praying, don't change it because you're not allowing it to. Because you're still praying, you're trying to pray, but you're really covering up what you're really going through and your mind is still going there and it just don't work. You won't, let, you won't give it all to God. Or you're trying to sing and you sing yourself... And that's still in the other side of your mind. You're like, man, I can't sing because of this. But I'm going to tell you something. When you sit down with your Bible, like I've been teaching you to do, and your notebook and your pen, and you start writing down the Bible, whatever you're going through, if you got to write it down, baby, write it down. And then go back over that chapter. Take a chapter and dissect it like you're a detective. You will be so set. Your mind will be so refocused, man. You, you won't be able to sit there and think of other stuff while you're doing that. So go to the truth, man, to counter those feelings. God's word is truth. The Bible. God's word is truth. I'll say it again. God's word is truth. Let's read 31 again. Praying's great. 
Singing's great. Let's see what the truth is, where you got to go to when it's that bad, y'all. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He's a buckler to all of us who trust in him. Go to the word. Go to the source. Let's, let's go to the first feeling. I don't feel God's presence. Because our feelings may say, man, and I hear you people say it all the time. God has left me. He's not here. And I'll tell you guys all the time, don't you ever talk to me like that. About my God. Don't blame your foul-ups and your decisions on God. Because that's what you're doing. You're making God a liar when you say that. You're, you're saying that his word ain't true when you say that. Well, that's not what I mean. Well, that's what you're saying, though. So let's go back to the one who's missing in this relationship between you and God. It's you, not God. You've left him. You don't show up in church. You don't come in the studies that he's given you. I don't see no comments from you people. You're not participating, let's put it that way, in what he put you, what he get the help he gave you to participate in. So no, you left him. Either you're all in or you're all out, man. It's one or the other. So you'll say, God's left me. Man, he's not here. Well, what does God say? What's the truth? I want you to go to Psalms right now. Pause your video and go to Psalms 910. Let's go there real quick. I'll go through some of it with you. Psalms 910. What's it say, man? Let's go find out what the truth is, bro. You saying all that mess. Psalms 910. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For the Lord. Let me read that again. And they that know thy name will put their trust in you. Talking to the Lord. God, if they know your name, if they really know you, they'll put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those of us that seek him. Go to Hebrews 13.5. Let's go there. Hebrews 13.5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. So what did God say there to you, you guys? He said, I will never, ever, ever, ever leave you. God said he's never going to forsake you. He ain't never going to turn his back on you. You've turned your back on God. God says that and God cannot lie. He doesn't not only not lie, he can't lie. Why? Because he is truth. He said, I'll never leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. And he won't lie, saying that he's always with you, that he'll never leave you. So what do you believe? Let's, let's just chalk it up. What do we believe? Do we believe our feelings at the time when you're feeling bummed out and lonely and, and, and pained? Is it, do you, do, what do you believe, y'all? Do you believe your feelings or do you believe God? Do you believe what you feel or do you believe God? Let me ask you this way. Which one is more reliable? Let's put it that way to you. Which one is more reliable? Our feelings or God? Put it in the comment section. Which one is more reliable? How you feel or God? I'm going to tell you. I, I want to bust some names out, but I'm not going to. Because you know exactly who I'm talking to. You are never, I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've ever done. 
You are never, ever, ever, ever out of God's presence. Never. You might want to write that down, but I am never out of the presence of God. He's always present with you, y'all, all the time. And that's a good thing sometimes, sometimes not so good, but he sure is there all the time, as long as you got breath in your body. He's there. Even when all the bad stuff you've done, oh yeah, he's there and he sees it too. And he's writing it down too. And he's calling you back too. All right. So we got that established. The second feeling we talked about is I don't feel forgiven, right? Your feelings, I hear you say, I've gone too far this time, man. God's moved on, left me behind. But what does God say? What is the truth? Go to 1 John 1, 9. You want the truth, right? Pick your Bible up, man. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's truth. We have big struggles with forgiveness, don't we? We have a hard time, man, forgiving other people, right? We hold on to stuff, man. Stuff that has hurt us, we hold on to it, don't we? We have a problem forgiving, not God. We do. And we have a hard time sometimes accepting forgiveness, too. You don't understand how God can, how, how in the world can God forgive me? God, how can you forgive what I've done? What I've done was horrific. How can you forgive me? We know what we've done, man. We know what was in our heart. We wouldn't forgive us if it were up to us, right? But you know what? Let me tell you something, Jesus doers. It's not up to us. I wouldn't forgive me if it were me. Well, it's not up to you. Ain't your cross to bear, man. It's your cross to bear to forgive other people and forgive yourself. But it ain't your cross to bear to determine whether God's going to forgive you or not. It's your cross to give it up, those sins, quit the sins, man. And let God do what he does and be who he is. And he's a God that forgives. If we confess our sins, God will forgive us. And he'll even purify us. If you decide to abide in him. Our forgiveness ain't based on how bad our sins are, you guys. Thank you, Jesus. And our forgiveness isn't based on beating ourselves up and, and serving penance. You understand? Our forgiveness is based on the faithfulness, justice, and righteousness of Yahweh, God, Jehovah. So I'm going to ask you again, church. Do you believe God or do you believe your feelings? Put it in the comments section because he does forgive. I'm living proof of it and so are you. Okay, the third feeling we're talking about is I don't feel saved. These are my, I hear this more than anything, y'all. Your feelings may say you've reached the point where you're either lost or you're not saved or you ain't no point of no return. I hear that one a lot. People might tell you that you're not saved. People may tell you that. That you didn't do it the right way. Okay. You might doubt that you did something right when you got saved, right? But what does God say? What is the truth? Once you turn your Bible to Romans chapter 10, let's find out what the truth of the matter is. What is the right way? Romans 10. 14, what is the truth, y'all? How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear of him without a preacher? Keep going. Up. Let me back up. Well, that's where we're going to stop at. Hold on. I'm sorry. It's Romans 10. 9 through 14. Let's start up at 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you're saved. 
For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Let's stop right there for a minute on verse 10. Now, I've explained this to you many times throughout my salvation time. Just because you get up and say the words with your mouth. That's just the first part of it, y'all. That's the half a heart, half of it. Because you just confess with your mouth. But Jesus said, if you believe in your heart, you're saved. To believe in your heart means you're all the way in full throttle, baby. You're going to church. The church he puts you in, you're learning his ways. You're doing his studies. You're talking to him, spending time him. You're coming to fellowship. You're following it. You're doing it his way. And you love to. You're helping the poor. You're helping your church. You're helping your pastors. You understand you're doing it God's way, not your way. Because your heart loves God that much. Not just because you said the words. And you said, yeah, Jesus, I believe you died and rose from the dead. You believed it with your mouth, not your heart, unless a change comes. Now the work's got to come. You're saved by that initial decision. Now, it's a continuation, man. You can either give it up or, or grow in it. Okay? Pick it up at 11. For the scripture said, whoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that calls on him. For whoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they not believed? How will they call on someone they never heard of? And how are they going to hear if it won't without a preacher? That's why Jesus put me out here. This is why Jesus anointed me, y'all, with his very hand. Not a vision. Somebody emailing me something about, Kim, this is like something you've seen in your vision. I'm like, I didn't have a vision. The visions God showed me was an was uh, apocalypse. When I was with Jesus, I was with Jesus. So, how are we saved, y'all? Let's wrap this up. How are we saved? We confess Jesus as Lord. We believe in our hearts that he is who he says he is. And we turn, don't miss this part. We turn from our sin and we turn to him. That's it. People want to do this part. We confess, Lord. We believe that he is who he says he is, but they don't want to never do the third part. Turn from their sins and turn to him. But you got to do that part, y'all, because that's when you're in truth. You got to be in truth to worship truth. So I'm going to ask you right now, all of you that have been talking to me about this stuff, man, now that you've heard all this, I'm going to ask you right now, have you believed, really believed in Jesus Christ? Have you called on his name, y'all? Have you felt the shame of your sin and told him you're sorry and stopped doing it and turned to him? That's the part people miss. If you have, then you're saved, okay? And now he tells you to abide in it. Continue in it because you can also discontinue it, okay? So the feelings that we have are real, okay? We know that. They could be good or they could be bad. But our feelings are not able to be the basis of truth in our lives, y'all. The word of God, the truth is to be the basis for our lives now, okay? So don't let your feelings rule your life y'all okay don't let your feelings ruin your life amen stand on the truth the word of god yahweh father son holy spirit jesus christ stand on the truth and walk in it okay y'all god bless you i hope this helps you because some of y'all need some help out there man all right remember that all right thank you guys i'm happy to help you i'm giving from my cheerful heart all the help that you need now, you do your part, okay? What God said to do for your teachers, your preachers, your church, all right? Walk in God in every aspect. Anything you need for that's in the description on the video, or you go to JesusDoers.com and find out. God bless you. We love you, and thank those of you that's helping also with the fundraiser. Love you. Care about you. See you in the barn tomorrow night, Thursday night. Give your life to Jesus, y'all. Make him Lord of your life. You only do that if you're doing the, thing, the things that he would do, that he did do, that he said to do. Because you love them. God bless you.